the future. Suddenly, he was made sales manager at $30,000 a year plus prime benefits. How she wrote her desires in her prayerful heart and received astounding results. A young woman learned that her conscious mind could be likened to a pen and that she could inscribe her true desires on her subconscious by frequent habitation of the mind with the desires of her heart. Accordingly, she decided to write two desires in her deeper mind by thinking of each one separately and with interest, knowing that her subconscious would respond exactly according to the impression made upon it. Her Most Cherished Desires Her first desire was as follows. My mother and I are going on a two-week holiday to Mexico. We have agreed that infinite intelligence opens up the way in divine order. Both of them pictured themselves on the plane, and they conducted an animated conversation in their imaginations with the hostesses. They felt the tangibility of the plane and the naturalness of the whole thing. After about a week, this young woman came to my office all excited, saying, Look what I found! This envelope on the street containing twenty one hundred dollar bills and a note inside. Whoever finds this, keep it. God bless you. And that's all. There was no name or any identification of any kind on the envelope. Now, it happens that there are eccentric millionaires who do things like this from time to time, which is a possible explanation of her good fortune, and they went on a wonderful extended tour of Mexico. The ways of your subconscious to get results are truly past finding out. Her second desire was for marriage. This is what she wrote with her conscious mind pen in her subconscious. I know my desire for marriage and happiness is the voice of God in me, urging me to lead a full and happy life. I know that I am one with the infinite now. I know and believe there is a man waiting to love and cherish me. I know I can contribute to his happiness and peace. I can be a great asset to him. I can cherish, love and inspire him to greatness. He loves my ideals and I love his ideals. He does not want to make me over, neither do I want to make him over. There are mutual love, freedom, and respect between us. These words go forth and accomplish whereunto they are sent. I have written this request in my subconscious mind with faith and confidence, and I decree it is done, finished, and established in my deeper mind. Whenever I think of marriage I shall remind myself that infinite intelligence of my subconscious is bringing this to pass in divine order. A few weeks went by, and the dentist who had been working on her teeth for some weeks suddenly proposed to her and she accepted. I had the joy and satisfaction of performing the marriage ceremony. This young woman gained a new insight into the wonders of her subconscious mind. Think prosperous and wholesome thoughts, and wonders happen as you pray. How Riches of Daily Healthy Thinking Brought Great Benefits A young divorced woman was resisting life by complaining, I am leading a humdrum existence. I am lonesome, frustrated, and I have no friends. I lead a drab, weary existence, etc. However, she learned that her thoughts are creative and that by thinking negatively along these lines, she was actually compounding her misery because whatever we give attention to, the subconscious magnifies and multiplies in our experience. After learning something about the laws of mind in our interviews, she reversed her habitual frustrated thinking and began to affirm frequently and systematically, I am happy, joyous and free. I am loving, kind, harmonious and peaceful. I sing the song of praise in the Lord, which is my strength, she realized and understood the mental law that whatever she attached to I am, she would manifest and express. She made a habit of affirming these mental truths, and her whole life was changed from the former so-called drab existence to a fullness of life, including marriage to a brilliant engineer, a new home, plus a new perspective and a new insight into the wonders of the riches within her. How a Housewife Planned for Prosperity and Happiness and Got Results A housewife who conferred with me was constantly whining and complaining, 
There is no happiness for me. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. I am stuck to a treadmill sort of existence. I wash, cook, iron, scrub, wash dishes and windows, and take care of three children. She was resenting and resisting her environment and felt life was against her and unkind to her. During our discussion, however, she began to awaken to the truth that prosperity and happiness represent a state of mind. Accordingly, she reversed her way of thinking and began to claim, Divine right action is mine. Success is mine. Wealth is mine. Happiness is mine. God's river of peace governs my mind, body, and activities, and whatever I do will prosper. I know my thoughts are creative. As an engineer plans a bridge, so am I planning prosperity and happiness now. I believe implicitly in the law of the Bible, which promises, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 This housewife accordingly stirred up the gift of God's prosperity within her, and her relationship to her work, her home, and her children changed. She released the imprisoned splendors within. Money came in from totally unexpected sources, and she became completely satisfied with her new lot in life. There are beauty and abundance where you are. God is indescribable beauty, and God indwells you. He walks and talks in you. Your mind and your spirit, your thoughts and your feelings, all represent God within you. The invisible life and power within you is God. Your thought, being creative, is also God in action in your life. Begin to contemplate that God's beauty and riches flow through your thoughts, words, and deeds, and you will pass on the beauty and riches of God to your family, friends, and neighbors. Give thanks for all the blessings you have. You can make your home beautiful, and you can inspire others to experience the riches of your deeper mind. You are the artist, the weaver, the designer, and the architect of your life. The Riches of His Secret Plan for Making a Profitable Business Deal I know of a man operating a large market whose brother, a partner, had recently died. This brother had bequeathed his one-half interest in the business to his two nieces. These girls were very negative and demanding, creating all sorts of problems for this man. They refused to sell their one-half interest. He said to me that following an argument with them over more money from the business, he wrote down on a piece of paper, I loose these girls to God completely. They are in their true place. Nothing is forever. This condition passes away now. It is God in action. He placed this writing in a drawer in his desk, which was marked, With God all things are possible, and forgot about it. In two weeks' time, the two girls, his nieces, agreed to sell their interest, and there was a perfect harmonious solution for his getting a profitable deal for the whole business. His technique was sound. Actually, he was writing the solution in his subconscious mind, and his method of placing it in a drawer in his desk was simply an outer symbol. He released his problem to the infinite intelligence of his subconscious mind, which is the secret place, from which you draw forth the answer to all your problems. How to Consider the Riches of the Infinite You can look at the stars at night. The cumulus clouds are there for you to admire, and the sky is as blue for you as it is for everyone. You can look at the sunset, whether you are rich or poor. You can listen to the songs of the birds and become enraptured with the beauty all around you. Begin to see the Divine Presence in all things about you, in the rising sun, the golden moon, the sky, the mountains, the rivers, the rivulets and the streams. Contemplate the beauty of all nature, and don't forget to see the love in your dog's eyes. Life is a mirror which reflects back to us precisely that which we deposit in our minds. Look through the eyes of love and beauty, and love, beauty and the riches of the infinite will come back to you. Longfellow said, Look not mournfully into the past, it comes not back again. Wisely improve the present, it is the thing. Go forth to meet the shadowy future without fear and a manly heart. Seneca said, We can only say he is anxious about the future, 
to whom the present is unprofitable. God, your good, is the eternal now. Claim your good and all the riches of life now. What you can conceive, you can achieve through the wisdom and power of your subconscious mind. The Wonders of Prosperous and Healthy Writing Out of Your Desires Every New Year's Eve I am requested to preside at an assembly and to conduct a New Year's prayer for a group of men and their wives. The custom is that each person writes out clearly his or her desires of the heart. There are only four categories such as health, wealth, love, and expression. No matter what you seek comes under one of these classifications. If, for example, you request wisdom as your sole desire, that comes under expression, or your desire to release more and more of the life, love, truth, beauty, and riches of the deeper mind. Also, in writing down their desires, it was suggested that a friend or relative be included in one of them. For example, if the friend or relative was involved in a lawsuit, they were instructed to write down, There is a divine and harmonious solution through the infinite justice and harmony of God for him. How Desires Written Out Have Come to Be Fulfilled it is amazing how many of these desires are answered before the end of the year. In many instances, some of their prayers are answered early the following year, but then it happens that the answers actually come at the right time, that is, when they are ready. All these written requests are placed in sealed envelopes and given to one of the men present who places them in his safe at home, and on the following New Year's Eve, each one is presented with his or her envelope and the owner reads it privately. One man showed me his written request and said every one had been fulfilled in divine order. One of his desires was that he would have more time for his sons and for more recreation and travel with his family. He was transferred and promoted and received six weeks vacation, enabling him to take his family on a five-week cruise. Also, he had much more time for his family during the week. Another request by a mother was that her two sons would never be called to service. They were deeply spiritual boys and abhorred war. They have never been called, and as she said, they never will be. She decreed and wrote, My boys are God's sons. God places them in their true place where they are doing what they love to do. God knows and God cares. All these men and women write down the deepest desires of their hearts trusting and believing that the infinite intelligence in their subconscious mind will bring their desires to pass in divine order. I always conclude my prayer with the group in this way. We decree that all these written desires are inscribed in the subconscious of each and that all these desires come forth in divine law and order. These prayers are answered either as written or in a grander and greater way in the sight of the higher self, which knows all and sees all. All these men and women are amazed to see the wonderful way in which these prayers are answered. The Real Secret of It All The secret purpose of writing these desires and sealing them is that we release them completely to the wisdom of the subconscious with faith and confidence, knowing that as the sun rises in the morning, so will there be a resurrection of all these desires in divine order. This is called divine indifference. When you have this attitude of mind, your prayers are always answered. Divine indifference means that you know it is impossible for your prayer to fail, for it is written, He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 Meditation for Impregnating Your Subconscious Mind The following meditation sincerely believed by you and repeated often will yield you great treasures. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. My creative word is my silent conviction that my prayer is answered. When I speak the word for healing, success, or prosperity, my word is spoken in the consciousness of life and power, knowing that it is done. My word has power because it is one with omnipotence. The words I speak are always constructive and creative. When I pray, my words are full of life, love, and feeling. This makes my affirmations, thoughts, and words creative. I know the greater my faith behind the word spoken, the more power it has. 
The words I use form a definite mold which determine what form my thought is to take. Divine intelligence operates through me now and reveals to me what I need to know. I have the answer now. I am at peace. God is peace. Chapter Points to Remember 1. You are prospering when you are expanding along all lines spiritually, mentally, intellectually and financially. You should have all the money you need to do what you want to do and when you want to do it. 2. Your subconscious mind accepts the dominant of two ideas. Reason out clearly all the reasons why all things visible and invisible come from one source. All things made by man came out of the one mind, and all things made by God came out of the same mind. Think prosperity thoughts, think of riches of all kinds and the immense wealth of the world, and your subconscious will respond to your habitual thinking. Supplant all thoughts of poverty with the thought of God's opulence and endless resources. Be open and receptive and let wealth flow freely to you. Be a good receiver. 3. Your conscious mind is the pen with which you inscribe your true desires in your subconscious. Think quietly and with interest of each desire separately, watering it and nurturing it with faith and expectancy. Do this three or four times a day. By frequent habitation of the mind, you will impregnate your subconscious and the cherished desires of your heart will be realized. 4. Never engage in thinking of lack, limitation, loneliness and frustration. On the contrary, have a mental plan of the things you want and then realize that whatever you attach to I am, you will create in your life. Get a little phrase easily graven on the memory such as I am happy, joyous, free, etc. Repeat it over and over again as a lullaby. Do it knowingly and feelingly. As you sow in your subconscious, so also will you reap. 5. Instead of grumbling, whining and complaining about present conditions, reverse that attitude of mind and claim boldly, Divine right action is mine. Divine success is mine. Divine love fills my soul and whatever I do will prosper. Know that your thoughts are creative and that you are what you think all day long. Have a healthy respect for your thoughts. Your thought is your prayer. 6. Begin to contemplate that God's beauty and riches flow freely through your thoughts, words and deeds and you will experience the results of your thinking. Furthermore, you will be able to pass on to your family the riches acquired by contemplation. You must have in order to give. It is only the rich people who can contribute richly to all. The poor cannot give. 7. When you are in a quandary and are dealing with difficult people, it is a good thing to write out clearly your desire as follows. This too will pass away, and there is a divine and harmonious solution through the wisdom of my subconscious. I loose it and let it go now. You can put this written prayer in a drawer marked, With God all things are possible. This is a symbolic way of releasing it, and it works wonders. 8. Life is a mirror for the king and the beggar, reflecting back to each of us precisely that which we deposit in our mind. 9. I have conducted group prayers on New Year's Eve where each person writes out his or her heart's desires. These prayers are sealed in an envelope, locked away for one year, and opened the following New Year's Eve. Each member is amazed at the way their prayers were answered. Many had forgotten what they wrote and were astounded. The secret is that they released all their prayers with faith and confidence to the deeper mind which knows all and sees all. They learned that when one has a divine indifference, the prayer is always answered. Divine indifference is not carelessness or apathy, rather, it means that you know whatever you claim and feel to be true in your heart must come to pass. Therefore, you wait for the answer with greater faith, assurance and conviction than the man who waits for the coming of the dawn. 10. The meditation at the end of the chapter will yield you amazing benefits for daily living. 
8. How to make and use a psychic treasure map. The soul without imagination is what an observatory would be without a telescope. H. W. Beecher. Imagination disposes of everything. It creates beauty, justice, and happiness, which are everything in this world. Pascal. The poet's eye, in a fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, and as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shape, and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Such tricks had strong imagination. Shakespeare Imagination is one of our most powerful faculties. Disciplined, controlled, and directed imagination is a mighty instrument which plumbs the depths of your subconscious mind, bringing forth new inventions, discoveries, poems, music, and an awareness of the riches of the air, the sea, and the earth. Scientists, artists, musicians, physicists, inventors, poets, and writers genuinely possess highly developed imaginative faculties which draw forth from the treasure house of their subconscious the riches of the infinite and bless mankind in countless ways. How Her Treasure Map Brought Her Riches and Companionship Recently I performed a marriage ceremony for a young secretary who told me that about six months prior to her marriage she drew up for herself a treasure map dividing it into four parts. In the first section she wrote, I give thanks for God's wealth flowing freely in my life. In the second she wrote, I give thanks for a four-month trip around the world. In the third she wrote, I give thanks for a wonderful, spiritual-minded man who harmonizes with me perfectly. In the last she wrote, I give thanks for a wonderful home which is beautifully furnished. Underneath these four requests she wrote, I give thanks for the immediate fulfillment of all these requests in divine order through divine love. Every morning, afternoon, and evening, she would go over her requests, affirming and imagining their fulfillment, realizing that gradually these images would be written in her subconscious mind, which would bring them to pass. The answer to her first request came in about a month's time. Her grandmother in New York bequeathed $50,000 to her in her will and also her Cadillac car. Her mother and father, who are living in Canada, invited her to take a trip with them around the world, and on the trip she met a young scientist. As she said, it was love at first sight, and her marriage to him took place on her return to California. He had a beautiful home, magnificently furnished. She said to me that writing out a treasure map and trusting the infinite intelligence of her subconscious mind really works, and it does. In addition to this technique, this young secretary got a passport, selected her tour, and every night imagined she was on the plane visiting all the foreign countries. She also imagined a ring on her finger, which meant to her that she was already married to a wonderful man. In her imagination, she lived in a beautiful home surrounded by trees, and last but not least, she imagined going to her favorite teller in the bank and depositing $50,000, and he in turn congratulated her on her good fortune. Her method helped her to get control over her thinking and imagination, enabling her to have dominion over her financial affairs, while at the same time bringing fulfillment in her love life and the field of expression. His imagination brought about a legal settlement. On a visit to the ruins of Chichen Itza, famous for its pyramids and relics dealing with the ancient Mayan civilization, the guide informed me that Itza means rattlesnake and that the symbol was used throughout their culture. Here I met an attorney from Texas who happened to be staying at the same hotel and he told me that after this vacation trip to the Mexican pyramids, he had a very tough assignment before him in Dallas, Texas involving the settlement of conflicting claims among members of a family regarding a will involving about a million dollars. One member of the family had engaged him to bring peace and harmony so that a prolonged lawsuit could be avoided. He was quite apprehensive about it, since a settlement would render him a rather large fee. I suggested that he practice the following imaginative form of prayer therapy. 
Inasmuch as there is no time or space in the mental realm, he was to project himself mentally into a conference room in Dallas where all the members of the family would be assembled, claiming harmony, peace, and understanding to be operating among them. Accordingly, several times every day prior to his assignment, he imagined the member of the family who had hired him saying, We have agreed to accept the terms of the will as written and will not contest it in court. He heard this over and over again and lulled himself to sleep every night with two words, Happy Ending. Some weeks after I returned from the pyramids of Mexico, I had a letter from my attorney friend saying that he had followed my instructions, and at the family conference there was a complete agreement and a happy ending as well as a large check for the harmonious solution to what had threatened to be a rather nasty court battle between brothers and sisters. How a Mexican Guide Uses His Imagination and Makes Extra Money a guide who drove me to Uxmal, one of the major archaeological sites in Mexico, which lies on the Merida Compeche Highway, slightly over an hour by motor car from the capital of the state of Yucatan, told me that during quiet periods when there are not so many tourists, his hobby is that of dowser and water diviner. He uses a bent piece of copper wire, and when he is asked to find water by a landowner, he visits the ranch, walks around and talks to his arm, saying to it, you will get firm and rigid, and the copper wire will point to the exact spot where water is. He added that in most instances he is correct. The few times I fail, he said, is due to the fact that I am too tired or that I don't concentrate enough. He informed me that he had made enough extra money dowsing to enable him to get his degree from the university, and that in a short while he will become an instructor in archaeology there. He showed me some maps also, which pinpointed where he had found lost cattle and lost sheep. He would study the map of the area and focus all his attention on the lost animal or animals, and the wire would point to the exact spot. He was simply tapping the riches already in his subconscious. When this young man was a very young boy, his father told him that he had inherited the gift of dowsing, and the young boy believed him. Inasmuch as the subconscious is amenable to suggestion and is controlled by suggestion, his subconscious responded according to his belief. Moreover, the subconscious mind is coextensive with all wisdom and intelligence, sees all and knows all, and it knows where water is and where gold is, for the whole world came out of the universal subconscious. Due to his belief and to his definite command to his subconscious mind, when he walks in an area where water is, his subconscious brings about a constriction of the muscles of his arm, a certain rigidity, and also acts on the wire, causing it to point to the spot to dig. I told him that he could improve his technique by suggesting frequently to his subconscious mind, You will tell me exactly how many feet deep the water is, and, according to his belief, is it done unto him. The Law of Constructive Imagining Overcame Her Discouragement a widow came to me in a rather depressed, dejected, and discouraged state. She had been trying to sell her two-story house for over a year. She had many people look at it, but none offered to buy, though they did not complain about the price. The upkeep was too much for her, and it was essential that she sell the home and retire to Leisure World, where an apartment was provided for her. I outlined for her what she was to do in her imagination. She followed the instructions faithfully and within three days her home was sold. At my suggestion, before going to sleep, she imagined a check in her hand for $100,000, the full price of the home. Then, in her controlled imagination, she deposited it in the bank with a great feeling of inner satisfaction. After this, and still in her imagination, she went into the apartment at Leisure World, which she had visited several times, and which was being reserved for just a month based on her promise to take it. In her drowsy sleep state, she slept on the divan of the apartment, all this in her imagination, and just before going off to sleep she said, Thank you, Father, for the fulfillment of my prayer in divine order. She did this for three consecutive nights, and on the morning of the fourth day an executive from the East Coast saw the house and wanted to move in immediately. The price was right, 
and everything else was right about it. He paid her cash in the form of a cashier's check for $100,000. Truly, imagination has been called the workshop of God. Einstein said, Imagination is greater than knowledge. What you can imagine and feel to be true will come to pass. Imagination clothes your ideas and projects them on the screen of space. Be faithful to that mental image in your mind, and you will find that it will one day be projected on the screen of space. How an Actress's Imagination Overcame Her Sense of Frustrating Competition A beautiful actress, who had been out of work for six months, said to me that she had an opportunity for a wonderful part in a new movie, but that the producers were considering three others also. Following their interview with her, she felt she could fit the part perfectly. I said to her that the idea of competition engenders anxiety, perhaps excess tension. I added that she might not get the part, therefore I suggested that she do this, declare with faith and confidence, I give thanks for my perfect expression at my highest level in divine law and order. I accept my role in this movie or something grander, greater, or more wonderful, according to the riches of the infinite for me. It is God in action. Then I suggested she release the whole thing to her subconscious mind. Whenever the thought of the movie contract would come to her, she was to say, Infinite Intelligence is taking care of that. She did not receive the movie part she applied for, but shortly afterward, she got a wonderful contract for overseas, far more wonderful and exciting than the one she had desired originally. Whenever you are faced with what you believe to be competition for a job, assignment, or whatever, persist in this simple procedure and get ready for the answer which will come to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Rewards of Picturing Success and Riches A few days ago, I had a lovely letter from a woman who, accompanied by her husband, is making a motion picture in France. Some years ago she had thought that everything was against her, everything seemed to go wrong in her life. I suggested to her, however, that she keep on imagining success and that the mental image, when repeated regularly, would overcome all her negativity. Imagination is the most powerful faculty for success and riches, when used in the right way. Many times a day she would picture me in her mind's eye, congratulating her on her wonderful success and marvelous achievements also on her happy marriage. A few months later, following an interview in my study, she left for England to visit her relatives. There she met and fell in love with a marvelous man who is thoroughly devoted to her. She got many television roles in England and now is engaged in a movie production in the south of France. She wrote that it is true. Whatever the mind expects, pictures, and perseveres in comes to pass even though the evidence of the five senses seems to deny it. She dared to continue imagining her good, persevering every step of the way, proving that the falling drops at last will wear the stone, Lucretius. Victory belongs to the most persevering, Napoleon. The Marvelous Power of a Master Image Your dominant or master image controls all phases of your life, your subconscious accepts the dominant of two ideas. Listen to the power of your subconscious mind. A cigar salesman in downtown Los Angeles visited with me for an hour about five years ago. Today he is worth over half a million dollars. However, he was barely making ends meet five years ago. He lived in a trailer, had two boys, a wife, and an automobile that needed constant repair. I explained to him how to use his imagination constructively, and he wrote down at my suggestion, I claim God's riches now, and my subconscious responds. I claim a beautiful home for my family. My wife, my two boys, and I each need a car, and my subconscious brings these requests to pass. Promotion is mine. Success is mine. I give thanks for the fulfillment of all this now. He and his wife made it a habit to mentally picture a lovely yard. They pictured a garage with four cars and a big bank account. Prior to sleep each night, he conveyed a message to his subconscious as follows, I am ever grateful for God's riches, 
forever active, forever present, unchanging and eternal. I give thanks for my promotion and outstanding success. Nothing happened for three months, then suddenly he was made manager of the store, and shortly thereafter his wife inherited property in Texas on which oil had been discovered. They moved to Texas, where he now has the beautiful home, four cars, and financial independence, since he is his own boss in charge of the oil wells worth over half a million dollars. It is written, Whoever perseveres will be crowned. Herdon Meditation for Effective Imagination The Workshop of God for All Good Where there is no vision, the people perish. My vision is that I desire to know more of God and the way He works. My vision is for perfect health, harmony, and peace. My vision is the inner faith that infinite spirit leads and guides me now in all ways. I know and believe that the God power within me answers my prayer. This is a deep conviction within me. I know that the mental picture to which I remain faithful will be developed in my subconscious mind and come forth on the screen of space. I make it my daily practice to imagine for myself and others only that which is noble, wonderful, and godlike. I now imagine that I am doing the thing I long to do. I imagine that I now possess the things I long to possess. I imagine I am what I long to be. To make it real, I feel the reality of it. I know that it is so. Thank you, Father. Chapter Points to Remember 1. The soul without imagination is what an observatory would be without a telescope. Imagination is the primal faculty of man, and it has the capacity to clothe your idea into visibility on the screen of space. 2. You can draw up for yourself a treasure map listing the cherished desires of your heart. Go over it several times a day, claiming and imaging the fulfillment of each desire now. Persevere, and you will find that the images will be deposited in the subconscious, which will bring them to pass. 3. If you are apprehensive and worried about the outcome of a conference or legal controversy, quiet your mind and claim that harmony, peace, and divine understanding operate in the minds and hearts of all involved. Select the person who gave you the assignment and imagine he is telling you of the harmonious agreement and hear it over and over again. Lull yourself to sleep with happy ending. You will succeed in impregnating the solution in your subconscious and there will be a divine agreement. 4. A guide, believing that he inherited the capacity of dowsing, carried what he called a divining rod with him, copper wire, and he had convinced his subconscious mind that whenever he walked over an area where water was, his arm would become rigid and the bent copper wire would point to the exact spot. His subconscious responded to his conviction, and he makes considerable money in this field of exploration. 5. If you have trouble selling a home, imagine you are holding the check for full payment in your hand prior to sleep. Give thanks for the check, feel its reality, the naturalness and wonders of it all, and imagine yourself at the teller's window depositing the same amount. Give thanks to your higher self, and you will find wonders happening as you pray that way. 6. When you are competing with others for a contract, assignment, position or role in the movies, avoid anxiety and tension by affirming, I accept this assignment or something far more wonderful according to the riches of the infinite for me. If you do not get that particular position, something far more wonderful will open up for you in the light of your higher self. 7. Even though your reason and senses deny the possibility of your attaining riches, promotion and success, persist in your master image for success, financial independence, a lovely home and the way you want things to be, persist regularly and systematically, knowing that your master image will sink down into your subconscious mind and come to pass. One man earning only $100 a week five years ago proved that his persistent mental imagery caused him to fulfill all his dreams, including holdings of a half million dollars.
This is the power of an overall master image. Whoever perseveres will be crowned. 8. Make full use of the meditation at the end of the chapter to help develop your greatest use of imagination for a richer life in every way.